Hey there internet, Keith here, and welcome to the Cars and Keith YouTube channel. In this video, we're going over the new Swivel Gun Pro from McKillens, designed in Canada, uh, which means you know where it's made, right? This is them kind of delving into the industry with their own design altogether, so this isn't something that somebody else has. I've got a warranty card. Now, here it is. That's a pretty good trigger. That's not bad. It has this uh, design here where you can hold a uh, quick connect, uh, nozzles. We're going to compare this mainly to the SGS-28, which is my current favorite gun. And that's this bad boy right here. This thing has been beat to death for almost four years now. I have my mad uh, car care detailing uh, nozzle holder up here. That's really, really good. Really nice. You can add that on. Just the form factor in that. Oh, that's so easy. But you hear a squeak. I was going to buy a rebuild kit and try to rebuild it and you know get it going but you know what I said we want to compare a brand new spray gun then we got to get a brand new spray gun so $84.99 is what I paid for this one and oh my gosh I mean it's this came out of the box and I was like man that's that's pretty good that's like definitely the second best pull I felt with this right here that is so good. Another big thing I see between these two is the angle of the spray. So this is more of a straight inline sprayer with how you would hold it in your hand. Holding it like this straight out, the stream goes straight out. Now the STS-28, which is something that a lot of people complain about, they don't like. Josh V actually doesn't like this because of this gun. When you, when you push straight out, you see how the nozzle is pointing up. So if I want to go straight, I do have to turn my wrist in and I do have to aim it at the car. So you can already see the difference in the angles. Obviously, the McKillens, when it lines up on the back, the back side of these are very close, except for the back side of the McKillens is much bulkier right here. They both have about the same thickness when it comes to, and the size here when it comes to where the hand is, which is very nice because you got plenty of room for, somebody has a big hand, same thing with the McKillens. It's the exact same, except they have like a honeycomb type uh, texture here versus these little uh, dots here that are on the SGS-28. McKillens is slightly bulkier, obviously, in width as well. It's just slightly and uh, more uh, squared with rounded edges, and this is definitely way more curved. It's a lot of exposed threading. It's just an aesthetic. As you can see from the end, how much further out the Quick Connect is on the SGS-28. Now, your internal grip area is actually at the bottom about the exact same, but there's way more grip on the McKillens because this is part of what they have added to their design is this little area right here in front of the trigger and that's to allow you to kind of put your your ring finger your pinky finger here you got your middle finger on the bottom and that kind of gives you the ability to pull that with just the one hand with the SGS 28 you can still do that but you run the risk of pulling the trigger while you're doing that. Now the McKillens actually comes with a few other parts, which I don't understand. You have this hundred dollars. So this is $99.99. I got 25% off early bird special. I got for 75 bucks. You have stainless steel, stainless steel, all these nice components. And then you packed it with brass quick connects, hundred dollar spray gun, brass quick connects. So this is an adapter from 15 to 14 millimeter or vice versa which will allow you to say, if you have your hose was 15 millimeter, allow you to adjust this 14 millimeter uh, adapter to be able to work on your M22 hose. There's nothing wrong with brass. Just for a hundred bucks, it needs to look good. You notice that the MTM swivel is way down here versus up here. So that bulky, bulky swivel does add a little bit of room at the bottom. Does come with a couple of replacement O-rings and some Teflon tape. Look like these might be Viton, the greens. That's the box, don't need that. We can put one here and one here, like that. I mean, they're on there, came off. Obviously that, one's, obviously that one's much, much heavier. Unlike on my old one, the uh, Magcar Care Detailing one, this Universal, when that goes in there, it's not going anywhere. So the thing about that is for me is because I'm the kind of person that throws my spray gun to the ground. I mean, look at this thing. I don't baby these things. So when I'm done spraying or whatever I'm doing, I'm, I literally toss it from about hip. I just toss it to the ground, not even worried about it. I'm just seeing already that this hits at this angle, They're, they might pop out. So if you are tossing it, you don't want to toss it down. 
like that to where the nozzles at the bottom are not gonna pop out because if you like this, they're close. I mean, they're still there. They're still in there. Oh. So the MTMS Trees 28 has just six of the screws and they're T15s. These are Phillips. Actually, let's try one of them. Is it, are these magnetic? They are. So they're steel, uh, they are coated, they're painted black, but on the threads, the paint has already come off. The uh, MTM, as you can see, these are very nice, high quality stainless steel screws. You only need six of them here versus nine of them here. So you see, you've got the stainless steel fitting coming into this brass, that is brass assembly, that is nickel plated brass. And then a brass bolt at the end. You have the, uh, the a very large, uh, shaft down there. That's what she said. <laughs> to the internal swivel. And then you have your quick connect at the bottom. So the trigger just sits in here like this. And it, it's just pendulums. And this little pin right here contacts that little metal pin on the inside of this. Uh, it pushes it in. There's a ball valve in here. When that goes in, the ball valve opens up, allows the water to flow through. So you can see on the McKillens, it's almost the exact same thing, except they have like a a metal plate on the inside that pushes that pin in. This pin looks to be a little bit thicker uh, and you have the same stainless steel except for this uh, shaft here is definitely not as big as that one. <laughs> and obviously a less bulky bolt at the bottom versus the MTM. Uh, it is that nickel plated, same. But on this back side, it's like a stainless steel screw. Let's check that out. You see right here. Yep, that's stainless steel. I'll tell you what, these stainless steel screws, you can torque them down without worrying about stripping them out. The metal on these are already kind of stripped with the screw bit I was using. Now I will bring in a few more guns when it comes to comparing some numeric things that we can judge, which would be how much they weigh and the trigger pull tension. So we have the essential washer. Uh, high quality, pretty decent gun. It's about 50, 60 bucks. The McKillen's uh, older swivel sway gun is basically pretty close to this, except this one was, this one just, it spins very well. This is the Suprints. Pressure washers, the Ryobis and stuff, you just, you want to replace, get you an Uberflex to go with that or use a stock hose, you just want a, one of these guns. $19.99, comes with a rubber top, guard for your quick connect. You have a swivel, uh, this is the active, uh, this is about uh, 80 bucks or so. I mean, it's it's a pretty easy pull. It's not it's not anywhere near McKillen's or SGS 28, but it's a pretty decent gun. It's just so just like it's bulky and stuff. It's a very Mosmatic like down there at the bottom. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you want me to try a Mosmatic gun. I'll try it out. I know it's freaking good. It's literally $200. think <laughs> it better be good. Now we're gonna weigh them because this is a metric, right? Essential washer. 1.34 pounds active 1.52 pounds this definitely feels to be the heaviest one here the suprints 1.28 pounds it's very light you got the mckillens at 1.48 pounds so very close to the active and the sgs 28 1.36 pounds so mckillen says that their trigger pull is is two pounds of force feels less than that. So we're going to pull about one pound, six ounces. That's not bad. From the middle, definitely more. One pound, 12 ounces at the dead center. Now let's hold it down. I'm going to put the trigger on there. I'm going to let go. I'm going to try to keep it held. It only takes about one pound, three ounces to keep it held down. Pretty dang good. SGS 28 from the bottom. 11 ounces of force, so not even a pound of force from the middle. We were dead at a pound of force. And I'll pull it down, put my trigger on there, let go. 10 ounces to keep it held. And that's what I'm talking about how easy it is to hold that. It's like, like I said, you're just laying in your hand like this. I don't even have to curl my fingers to keep that trigger to where it's still spraying. It's literally like, it's loose. This one's pretty close to the same as well. Like it, I, it sits that way, but I do have to, I have to put a little tension to keep that trigger from coming out. And that's that difference between the two. 
the active would be at about almost two pounds of force, like a pound, 14 ounces from the bottom, from the middle. Oh yeah, two and a half pounds in the middle. Let's pull it down, let it go. But it's only about a pound, eight ounces to keep it held though. Central washer, oh my goodness, that's a lot of force. Four pounds of force at the bottom. Five and a half pounds of force in the middle. Pull it down, let it go. I mean, you just feel it, it just wants to pull back. It takes about three pounds, six ounces. Here's the superants, the very bottom. Oh, wow. About four pounds, five ounces, dead center. Wow, six pounds in the center. Hold it down, let it go. About about three pounds, six ounces to keep it held. Oh yeah, these, ra these reign supreme over these right here. So what's next? Well, some superficial testing. We have a foam mechanic test. We have a PSI test. And obviously we'll do a bucket. We'll do a gallons per minute test between the two. Now these should not perform any different. These are literally the exact same. Pull trigger, open ball valve. They both let the pressure washer do the work as it interacts with the nozzle orifice size to determine your gallons per minute and your pressure. Less than a percent difference, more than likely. Let's grab our Kevlar 3 inches hose from Blue Shield. At the 2.3 up on the wall, so we're using our 4.5 tip. So I have the SGS 28 swivel. We don't care how the swivel works when it's not pressurized. We care about when it's pressurized. When it's pressurized, you can see swivel works very good. You can see we got pressure. And when you're holding it, it swivels. Swivels quite well, uh, much less loose than when it's not pressurized. Very smooth, uh, very nice. So as you can see, we can definitely turn, no problem. Uh, here's our pressure. You see, it does not affect the spray pattern. It's the same spray pattern as I always expect. Incredible Suds, 32 to 1. Cars that keep save you 10% on their website. Just a really good foam. So very good cleaning soap, not just a pH neutral foam soap. It cleans well. And uh, it's 32 to 1. So there's only one ounce in here versus 32. Well, not in here. I mix it bulk 32 to 1. But if you were using in these, you basically just put an ounce in there, fill it up to the max line, you're good to go. And this is something you can't really buy unless you buy two different foam cans. This is an MJJC Top Pro V2, and this is a Griots bottle, a Griots cap. Of course it can foam, incredible suds. We have a 1.45 orifice in here as well, not a 1.25. So here's that difference. I'm holding the gun with my palm in there, right where I can pull the trigger, and my <laughs> nozzle is pointing straight to the ceiling, so now I gotta turn it. Now when I turn my hand, I now have the weight of the hose also pulling at my forearm a little bit as I have to turn, which is a little uncomfortable when my trigger is a pull. Once I pull the trigger, I'm good with it. But when I'm not pulling the trigger down, I definitely feel it a lot more. When I'm up here, I have to turn even more to get that downward angle that I'm looking for. What I do is I adjust my hand position to where it's a little more towards the bottom down here. And I'm really gripping it in a much smaller area versus very widespread. And it really helps. PSI. About 950. GPM, it's just a bucket. I'm gonna tear it out to where it's at zero. So that way, whatever the amount of water there's weighs, we'll convert that to gallons. One minute on the clock. Here we go. And I was pulling that trigger and holding it down with just the one finger the entire time. Feel no fatigue. So we got 19.40 pounds converts to 2.32 gallons per minute. I noticed that my, my PSI was a little less today. It was about a thousand yesterday with the same nozzle and uh, 950 today my voltage kind of changes from day to day if it's a higher voltage i get more psi if it's lower voltage i get less but when i get less psi i get more gallons per minute so 2.32
Since we already have the bucket test, we might as well do the GPM, but let's check the PSI first. Exactly the same at 950. So we'll try this out. Now, like I said, there could be a percentage difference here because I could have held on for a tenth of a second longer. Uh, it could be a ton of variables here. Here we go. 19.39 and we had 19.40 last time. So just about dead on. We're talking like tenths of a percentage difference here. Quick connect, connect in, just like they did on the MTM. Here's the spray powder. Exactly what we we're expecting. Oh, well, it's the same. Now I will tell you one thing. This is a cool design and all with this whole thing right here. But literally when I have the phone can, I'm like taking a hand here and I'm just using my finger to do like that. I'm not like putting my hand in that position to do this. I feel like it's a lot of extra work. I can do all this just like this. Like I don't have to hold to where I'm pulling. I don't have to hold where I'm pulling with these because I still have to hold the nozzle in the hand. This doesn't make it a one handed operation versus that. I literally, I hold it like this and I use the other hand and I just push the quick connect and I feel like that is just like just as fast as say holding here and, and doing this. This is where that angle makes a difference. You can see I am dead across my nozzle isn't pointed at the ceiling, it's pointed at the panel. So when I'm up here turning down, this is not putting as much weight on my arm as I'm trying to turn and make these angles. And here's your swivel. Actually, I mean, it spins really well. Obviously these can break in over time. Slightly doesn't spin as well as the MTM, but it spins great. As you can see it is spins, the hose is not spinning with it. So we can not kink when we make our turns. And I mean, it's, it's working well. But it's definitely, there's a little more tension in this spin versus the MTM. And as you're spraying, pivot's just fine. So let's test the nozzle guard thing out real quick. I'm not gonna put the long ones on there because they just really just, they don't, they don't go on here very well. So let's cut the hose back up. We have the nozzles here. I'm just gonna see, like this is normally what I do is I'm sitting there spraying. When I'm done, I'm gonna throw it down like that. The nozzle stayed. They lost their, their position, but they did not pop out. So you pop them back in. That's kind of where I was doing like this and I was trying to drop them to where the nozzle hits the bottom. Let's try to drop it like this. It worked just fine. Those actually stayed all the way in there. Oh, never mind. <laughs> never mind. They stay in there pretty well as long as the, the first one kind of hit right here as it fell, but when it hit right in here, when it fell, both nozzles popped off and went across the room. So you gotta be very careful if you're using this when you're kind of setting it. Uh, you don't just wanna drop it without thinking. You wanna kind of get it flat and do a little, a little toss like that and the nozzles will stay just on fine. Well, there you go. And McKillen's for your first like full design, like full on thing here, not bad. Like this is pretty good, but it's a hundred bucks. Um, Compared to the SCS28, I prefer the SCS28. The one thing between the two, just like some of the other ones, that gets me to like them a the little bit more is the angle of the spray is dead straight versus the SCS28 does shoot up in the air. You do have to turn down to get there. So there, there could be a little extra fatigue there, but the easy pull and the, it being lighter kind of makes up for all that. The SCS28 is just so dang good. That pull is so easy. It's just, it, you'd have to get one to understand how easy that is. People tell me all the time, like, hey, 85 bucks is just a lot. And when they go from a $40 spray gun, they go to the SGS 28 and they sit there and they pull it down. They're like, you were right. It's like, it doesn't even exist. Like you don't need a lock. You don't need anything. It's just literally just sits in your hand. But this one is really close to that. It's really close to that. And some people like a little tension. I think it should have been priced closer to the $85 mark to be, or 80 mark to be with the active and the SGS 28. So there you go. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to check out the links below for anything in the video. And I'll see you in the next video.
but uh, on the website they're selling these for ninety nine nine ninety nine nine. But on their website they're selling these for ninety nine nine. I can't say it. Wants to do and it interrocks all the work has it interrocks with interrocks. How many times are you gonna say interrocks?